back to the channel. Hope you've been having a good week. Today's content is going to cover traction control, which I think is something that a lot of tuners like to keep some secrets about. They don't really necessarily discuss their entire strategies. I know personally mine have continued to evolve over the years. There's a lot of basics, though, that really isn't uh, anything that needs to be kept secret. It's not an SR-71 Blackbird or F-117 Stealth Fighter. It's nothing like that. So today, we're going to kind of talk about some of this, see how it all relates. We're going to use my car as an example, since it's a high-torque front-wheel drive car. Turbo V6 makes lots of torque at relatively low boost, which doesn't work very good when you're only driving one axle, regardless of having good tires. I happen to have 275 50 15 Mickey Thompson Pro Bracket Radials. I have a lot of front weight bias. Still get some slip. Let's jump right into it. You'll see that I have my Infinity layout up here. The passing question is the car when it was a uh, rod and piston J35. It was the 199.4 pass, which was roughly 37 pounds. There were a couple points where it might have been just a touch higher, but for the most part, that was the, the actual average in fourth and fifth. Now, if we switch to the traction control tab here, we're going to see a couple different tables. They all have basically the similar concept. This one is traction control, torque, reduce, fuel cut percentage. So that's going to be an actual injector fuel cut. We have one for drive-by wire, which is not currently populated. We have one for spark cut. Down here, we have one for timing retard. And we have our actual slip target in mile per hour. At the time I was doing it per gear, I've switched that to where it's versus ground speed so that the percentage is really easy to do in my head. I just have to stare at it. So now let's talk about some of the things that I look at as I'm comparing my slip stuff. Over here we have uh, various channels. We got engine speed, about 7,500 RPM, manifold pressure 15.3, throttle you can see it was pinned this VE number is an imaginary number this is just what I'm commanding for fuel relative to my fuel injector setup we have actual spark timing which in this case is 13 degrees we have how much ignition was being taken out we'll get to what it was doing specifically or why it was doing it 5.6 degrees of retard I was in third gear vehicle speed which in this car is the rear wheel speed and then there's a slight variation between it and ground speed but it's the same thing 94.8 95 miles an hour we could even average that out if we wanted but that's how fast the car was actually going the front tires however were going a little bit faster 104.4 on the right you see drive right here 102.3 on the left so maybe it was slipping left to right as well as front to back we have coolant temp we have a, a calculated torque reduction number here. We have what the target was at the time, which you can also see the map trace is kind of cool in the infinity. So it's, it's already highlighting where we were. I just want to continue to explain. We have what the actual slip in mile per hour was, 9.36. And that worked out to 9.8%, almost 10%. Now, in any car that's using using traction control, you are actually faster if you have some slip. Dead hook doesn't mean your car is going to be the fastest it can be. A little bit of slip actually helps. Now, for a radial car, that's normally 5 to 7%. Slicks, prep track, sure, it might be 8 to 10. Some of that can vary how you measure it. Formula One will quote numbers of 15%, but they're also way more advanced than what we're trying to do here right now. Now if we come up to the plot, this is the actual log that we're using to trace functions. We have all the same numbers up here. We can see that this blue line is the slip target. We've exceeded that. Purple is what that 9.4, 9.36 miles per hour is. So we have a little peak over the target. So what was it doing? Well, we can see that for that small of a percentage and that high of a gear, it didn't do anything here as far as cutting fuel, which we think of as a rev limiter. It didn't do anything with the spark. 
but it did grab the table down here, torque reduction timing, or torque reduce timing. So it was populating a number somewhere in between here almost. We see that it came up with 5.6 degrees. The target was actually 5, but it must have been just just enough above that that it, it added some extra in for whatever reason. So what does that do? Well, let's switch to a dyno sheet of this car at that boost level. And we're going to get an idea of how much torque it was making, how much 5 degrees of timing can actually kill, and, you know, kind of just see how this all relates. So if we switch over to WinPEP 7, where I have the old dyno files, we have a dyno plot from the engine at that time. We see that it was a peak of basically 17 pounds, 16.98 here. It made 704.9 horsepower, 532 foot-pounds peak. At 7,500 RPM, where we had our slip, it's 15.23 pounds. Made 681 horse, 476 foot-pounds. It could have varied a little bit. This is an earlier dyno sheet, but it kind of gives you an idea of what it should have been doing. So we had 476 foot-pounds. It pulled five degrees out. Well, good question. What's five degrees worth? Let's go ahead and pull this dyno run off real fast. We're going to go to my two examples of what five degrees is worth in my car. Now this is at six pounds. And we're gonna we're gonna show what happens at six pounds also in first gear, which that's way skate line. I don't quite have 7,500 RPM out here, but you can kind of see the trend at 7,000 in this example. 377 foot pounds, 429 foot pounds. This is five degrees. So we've lost over 50 foot pounds of torque in that five degrees. It's not always gonna be 10 foot pounds per degree. On my car or any car it just in this example that's roughly what it worked out to so it gives you an idea that we turned this number here this 476 into maybe or 478 get right back on it here we turned it into 426 425 foot pounds let's say now all of a sudden it starts to hook when we switch back to the plot we can see it's pulled the timing, it's let the timing back in. Now over here we're back up to 18, 18 degrees. So for that momentary slip, we got 17 pounds of boost, so we're probably theoretically right back to full power. We're back to that 681 horsepower that we, we looked at, maybe a little bit more. It starts to hook, and it keeps moving, everything's good. And we get a little bit of another slip event. Now at 8,000 RPM, 17 pounds of boost. The boost has come back up, but we start to look. The slip percentage, it's not very high in comparison now. Now we're a lot closer to what we thought of as a maximum allowable, 7.8 miles per hour versus 7.5. The percentage works out to 7.5%. I think at this time... This is almost three years ago, but I think at this time I was trying to do 7% in third gear. So let's go up here. We're going to go look at the actual run where it was making the six pounds and the, the two timing numbers that we looked at. Oh dear, what do we got? We got 18% slip. What we can see, though, is it's seesawing back and forth. Now, switching back to the dyno screen here, we're going to minimize and go to what it, it does at 5 or 6 pounds. This part was broke here, unfortunately, that particular run. So I happen to know that this is wastegate. So 430 horsepower versus 375 horsepower, 55, 55 horse, 40 foot-pounds of torque. That's what it does on wastegate, and we can see that here. 6.6 .6 pounds, 7,000 RPM. It's pulling 16 degrees out, so the timing at this point has dropped to 4 degrees total. 
The torque reduction request is 35%. We have peaks of 18% slip. That immediately kills power. We see that that number drops back down to what we want, 7%. It comes back up, 12%. And so it cuts back and forth, back and forth. And some of this is in part to how I have my PID settings for the traction control. But we start to see a trend here. As we get up towards 8,000 RPM, it's starting to hook. There's enough vehicle speed in this case. We got 48.9. 48 ground speeds 40 miles an hour so we have enough ground speed that the car is starting to hook starting to get ready to shift and then the shift happens up over here but it's already dead hooked at this point well this is actually the shift now that we look at it yeah I shifted 8500 and now I'm in second gear and all of a sudden it can hook that we've reduced the torque enough by changing the gear ratio that that same 6.67 pounds of boost, the car doesn't have any problems hooking it up, 1.5% slip. So here's a great example of where I should have put more power back into second. I think this was my second pass, so I hadn't gotten that far yet, but at any rate, that's, that's a different subject. That's interpreting data at the track. Oops, I clicked on the wrong one. Let's go to the traction control. Now we're going to see these torque reduction, fuel cut percentage, and spark cut start to get used. So now we're over here. We're at 35. So it's trying to reduce the torque 25%, 22%. I wasn't logging it at the time, so I don't have what the total. Oh, I do, 35%. Um, what the actual used number was, however, I don't have that. But... 35, that's going to be 22.5% cut. I've read that that means percentage of cylinders. If you had six cylinders, that means every revolution, it's going to cut 22% of them. Not necessarily a real number, but we see that that's at least one cylinder didn't get fuel, and then it randomly rotates. Torque, or the spark uh, cut, similar. It's going to be 5%. So that means every rotation, 5% of my cylinders got cut. If you round the numbers up to what six cylinders would be, you know, it might take 10 or 13 full RPM, that is full revolutions per minute, in this case per second, and one of those is going to get cut. So that's first gear. We, we can see actual application of these two cut tables. Now, if I had drive-by-wire, I could have this populated to where the drive-by-wire starts to close to help limit torque. Is kind of what this table's about. This was a cable throttle at the time, so this, this table's not really populated, but we could see where you could pull this down and you might end up at 30% throttle because this table is cutting your actual throttle percentage by the same 35%. Well, if I have this, for instance, set to 50, that means it would cut my throttle 50%. You could kill power real fast, not cut the cylinders, not really do a bunch with the timing, limit airflow at incredibly high speed. A lot of modern drive-by-wire throttles work really, really fast to help regain that traction. Now, I'm going to switch for giggles to what my untested but plan for the coming year is and you can see I've gotten a little bit more aggressive with the throttle or with the fuel cut a little bit more aggressive with the spark cut a little less aggressive with the actually a little more aggressive with the torque uh, reduction by timing retard but I have added this drive-by wire value in here and for reference I have the same log from that 199 mile an hour pass so we can kind of see where it would end up if we come back here oh so in this particular example it would have ramped up that fuel cut percentage a little bit more help help rein it in faster hopefully and cut throttle 40 percent in this case cut fuel 30 percent or spark i keep getting that backwards my apologies in this particular case, we would have been here 
for wherever I'm on the, the, the log. Apparently wasn't quite where I wanted to be, but 30%. So now it pulled 25 degrees off. So it could be a negative number. Theoretically, it wouldn't even ever get there, though, because we're going to do a lot to try to limit its ability to go that crazy. Anyway, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this brief expl explanation of traction control and practical use. We'll get into some more advanced concepts on this in a future video. Please, as you've continued to do, let me know what you like, what you don't like. If this is in content that you're interested in, please hit the subscribe and like buttons. You can also hit the bell and be notified of new content as it's added. Thanks again. Hope everybody has a good day. Bye.